welcome to another episode of Lifestyle Expose. It's your girl Laura. Well, today we're going to be talking about beautification. And with me, my guest today is Vivian. Vivian is the CEO of Dazzle Me Diva, and she's here with me looking dazzling. Hello. Hi. How are you? Very well. Thank Laura. you for coming here to my studio, <laughs> and you know, I appreciate and I can see all the makeup oh, transformation. Yeah. Just a little something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so Vivian, can you just tell us a little bit of um, Dazzle Me Diva? Well, Dazzle Me Diva, it's a makeup brand. Okay. My makeup brand, I'm the CEO. Okay. And it was born out of the idea of, um, I, I love to beautify people, like right from the beginning. I've always wanted to make people look good. Basically, I don't wear makeup like myself, okay. but I don't know, there's this thing like when you see a girl or a lady, let me use the word because I do divas. Okay. And then I'm like, oh God, I can actually transform this <laughs> into something really pretty. So that idea came up and I'm like, okay, so what can I do? I thought about fashion. Yeah, I do a little bit of that anyways, but basically I love makeup. I like to see the transformation. You know, there's this wow effect when you see what your hand created. That's not to say that they're not beautiful anyways, but I like to just make them look beautiful. It's all about beautifying somebody. I mean, okay. bringing out the beauty in you because everybody's beautiful, but we'd like to go the extra mile. Okay, um, I've seen you do different makeup. Actually, she did one for me, and it was awesome. A lot of people were like, is this Laura? Is oh, this yeah, Laura? you look like one white. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you duplicate a look from a magazine? Yes, I can. Okay. Now, if a client comes and says, this is what look we want to go for, mm -hmm. like, okay, this is what team, rather. Okay. Because, of course, the, the magazine has different works you want to do there. It's either for a fashion magazine um, different stuffs anyways that you really want to do in a magazine. They tell you this is what look we are creating. Like, is it urban? Is it, um, are you going for something dark? Different kinds of look. So you can duplicate and then you try as much as possible to get close to that. Sometimes, because it's a magazine, you actually don't know what products they use there. But of course, I know that look, when I see a vintage look, I know that this is a vintage look. I try to recreate that. When I see a 60s look, which is still vintage anyways, or I'm going for a very chic look, the same thing. So it's, it's all about putting your effort and um, you, 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 get, you, come, you come out with something good. Okay, since you're an expert in the field, can you tell me what looks girls do like to go on? Vintage or the, like, cheeky? Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, the cheeky, no. You know, I like to tell myself that what what's can transform you is just your eyes. Okay. Like they usually say, the eyes is the window to the soul. So if you come with this flat look, Basically, my go-to look is I like to use the black, really dark look, which is, you know, way back, Cleopatra and Co. They okay, stuck yes. with red lipstick mm -hmm. and then really deep eyes. So that's where you can talk about the vintage look. Then sometimes you want to look chic. Or chic is, um, is all about being um, a girl at the same time being a boss girl, okay. a boss lady. You don't go all girly, but it's, it's just a line between. And then you just go for a look that says classy. Okay. Not out all there, maybe subtle eye and the bold lips or um, bold eyes and the subtle lips. I think that would work for me. Okay, Vivian, can I ask you this funny question? Yes, please. What if a customer comes in unhappy? How would you handle that customer <coughs> to make her look bright? In? I tell myself most times your customer is the one who pays the bills. So you have to satisfy your customer. Okay. They have to be happy all the time. So when a customer comes in very unhappy, the first thing I do is I try to calm you down first and listen. That's number one, listen, because they have their opinions as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you like red does not necessarily mean I'd like red. So I like to know your opinion, then I chip in mine where I can and let you know that, oh, it may work this way or another way. And I want to see that smile. If you're not satisfied, then I would not be happy. So I like a look. Because you, if, if, if I like bold look sometimes, if I have to go all the way out, like if I really want to wear makeup, I like to go all the way out, like all bold. And then some people don't really like the makeup that says, yes, I'm wearing makeup. Okay. So I'd like to ask you that. You need to know what they want first. You need to calm them down and really communication. I think it's like the key points there. 
you need to communicate and know exactly what they want. I mean, I, I feel at the end of the day, it makes them calm and then it, you get a better result and then they're satisfied. Everybody goes, goes home happy. Okay, have you ever been satisfied or are you always satisfied with your customers after the makeup bit? Uh, yes and no at the same time. <laughs> okay. Let me use that word. Because sometimes you actually think you did well and some clients can be very difficult to please. But yeah, that's why you're your client and that's why you're a professional. You should mm -hmm. be able to satisfy everybody. So I try my best to get at least to the closest of what they expect. Okay. I'm not a perfectionist, but I'm not perfect rather, but I try as much as possible to get really close to what they want okay. and everybody is happy. There are a lot of amateur makeup artists everywhere okay. now. Everybody just goes, you, you go to the roadside, you learn makeup, and then the next thing you call yourself an MUA. <laughs> So it, it just, it's, it's upsetting. And then another thing, when clients as well, sometimes, it's not as if they upset you, but um, sometimes they don't really have a mind of their own. Okay. That's where communication comes in. It's a challenge because today you're like, okay, I want it this way, or I have um, this so, so, so and so number of bridesmaids and all that. And then when you get there, you find out that it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. But basically, I think it's, it's um, there are really serious challenges besides the pricing, amateur makeups out there and all that. Okay. And I think over the years, um, a lot of companies have found out that our weather here is quite different. So they produce makeup products, makeup brands and products for women of color, which I think it's a very good thing. There are a lot of brands that works for us here, a lot of them. I mean, we have Mark, we have uh, Mary Kay, Mary Kay, because most of those products that actually are not that, that are for women of color, they are mostly water-based Okay. because of our weather. It's really not, you can't be using oily-based makeup. Then there are a lot of them. There's BH Cosmetic out there. There's Becca as well. We have um, Clinique, Maybelline, New York. <laughs> there are so many of them to mention, and they're all for women of color anyways, which okay. is what they tell us as. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Okay. All right. When we come back, we'll be talking about the viability of this business. Do stay tuned.